atonement, to be at one, to seek peace with myself and God. This is my monastic calling. This is my spiritual journey. Seventeen hundred years ago, a black monk named Abba Moses, or Saint Moses the Black, lived and taught on the deserts of Africa. The teachings of our desert fathers, such as Moses, provided the foundation for Christian monasticism in Europe. Today, I am one of six men who are founding the first all-black Benedictine monastery in the United States. My name is Brother Bruce. Benedictine monk, and I chose this way of life in response to the call because there were black men who were Benedictine monks. And I came to know them. They made themselves available for me and invited me to share in their lives. And I did that. I became a novice and I began to learn about what life is like in the school of the Lord's service. Come with you, my son. Listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Draw near to him and be enlightened, and your face shall not be put to shame. After our deliberations, I accept Brother Bruce Knox for solemn profession. Please let us kneel. A monk is a 
man who gives his whole life to God. I go to bed praying, and I wake up the next morning, you know, uh, thanking God. I could have been married now. I don't know how this is going to sound to you, but you have, you have to know that um, the reason why I am doing what I'm doing is because some, there's something in me, there's a stirring in me that, and has been in me all my life, but 10 years ago, I really got in touch with it, that moves me to want to love God as God as much as God loves me as me. I'm no accident. <laughs> I am the result of an act of love between my parents. My family knew that I always wanted to be a priest. Because when I was young, I used to pretend that I was a priest. I used to play that. Play Brother Bruce. They'd gone into debt to send me to school, and I flunked out, you know, and I'd done all these things. I'd made all this money with these different companies and things, you know, and what was I going to do? You know, I didn't have anything to show for it. I mean, I was having a problem. I had a problem. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, you know, everything that was really important to me wasn't important anymore. And I had a problem because I didn't know why, you know, it wasn't important. And so I, I really had to, uh, no one would understand it. Uh, subsequently, I went to my parish priest and um, I rang the doorbell <laughs> and, uh, and there I was waiting, you know, what am I going to say? How am I going to, you know, put this in words? You know, uh, I'm not crazy, you know, but uh, uh, I need some help right now, you know, because uh, this thing is really too powerful. And so he sat down and, and he listened to me, he listened to my story. And he said, um, well, have you ever thought about, you know, the religious life? You know, and I said, yes. You know, he said, well, uh, we said, uh, you should check it out. Check it out. And I did. Houston, Texas is big. Most of it is only 10 years old, and already it stretches 60 miles from east to west. One thing they say about it, there are all kinds of jobs here. Every month, 3,000 new people from all over the country stream into this city to get them. Houston has a large number of minority Catholics, too. Many are Creole of African, American, Indian, and French descent. And they're black cowboys, too. And I had never seen that. John Fletcher, Houston, Texas, cowboy. Nose his head. On the flag waving crossways, that mean the cowboy received no time. Better luck to you next time, cowboy. It's a different life, a different culture from what I knew back in Indianapolis. But here at St. Philip Neri, where we began our work, I found many concerns to be the same. One of the difficulties with believing is it suggests to people it's just something you do with your head. You know, I believe. Sometimes it just means that I accept. Whereas the concept of faith means, means that, but also means more than that. Faith means commitment. Faith means giving priority. Faith means also... An action. Action. 
Acts of faith. Okay? That you're doing stuff. Are black people free? No. <laughs> no. And it ain't funny either. These parents are concerned with safety in the neighborhood, especially for their children. There are not enough traffic lights to help them cross the street safely. The crime rate is high, and there is a need for a police substation. A heavy rain comes, and much of the area floods. In some areas, garbage trucks never come. Rats breed, sewers back up, and bayous overrun. It's unhealthy. The school is a focus for community activity because that's where the parents look for leadership and care for their children. provides counseling and guidance and a forum for working through the issues that our teenagers face. I sit back last night and I watched and today I listened a great deal and I asked questions. Chappelle was sweet 16 last night. She was in her fifth glory, people. Well, you're going to hear about these things today and my comments about them. As a black people, one of our traditions are that we are a caring people. We care what happens to each other, but we can care in so far as we know what is happening. Who was And who else? Hey, 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 get Who else, Tanya? Come on, baby, come on. What I say, what you do in the dark, you're going to come to light with it. Okay. And who else? Don't be afraid to say your own man was Andre. <laughs> I'm not at so much that peer group judging them, but you judging your own behavior. And that's how I feel with grown-ups. Our kids have to understand where their parents are coming from. Their parents have to understand where they're coming from. That can only be done by communication. Any man who cannot become a good father or a good husband cannot become a good minister to the people of God. I've just taken my talent and channeled it not to one individual person, but to a whole populace of people, which makes a difference. I feel that I'm very much capable of being a father and a loving husband, because when I'm dealing with these children, I'm doing the same things, hopefully, that I would do for my own child. make it a frequent practice to have our kids meditate, where we have the child just relax himself, place himself in the presence of God.
his strength or his whole body and then to love his neighbor as himself I remember my first religious experience at the age of four I was just tall enough to stand on the kneeler and have my chin just above the back of the pew I remember the bells and I remember the candles, and I remember the priest raising the host and raising the chalice. It was an unusual time, it was a special time for me. But as it is for me today, when I go to mass, it's different, sacred time. Right now, 
young black minds because that's where I have been called to work in the black community. If it is to preach, you know, that love of God has been called out of me. If it is to stand in the supermarket at the checkout counter and be patient with some very impatient people, that is love of God has been called out. And the gift that is given to me is the ability in that love to respond for what's out there. We still have to be about the business of liberation. We have to allow freedom to be a reality and support that by our lives. So we have to be free ourselves. Lord, hear the prayers of your holy people. Prepare the heart of your servant for his monastic consecration. Prostration symbolizes dying from the world, and the monk arises transformed into a new life of prayer and work, of poverty, chastity, and obedience, a way he will follow for the rest of his life. Take, Lord, receive all I have and possess. You have given all to me. Now I return it. Give me only your love and your grace. There enough for me. Your love and your grace are enough for me. May the Lord fill you with his love. May he accept the total offering of yourself in your service. May he be your reward in this life and bring you to eternal life with him. And this we ask through Christ our Lord.